Welcome back, my friends, to the amp that never ends. Move along, move along. Guaranteed to blow your head apart. All right, we're back here with the uh, Gibson GA20 RVT Minuteman. And um, some corrections here from the last video. Um, I uh, put some bad information out there on the internet, so uh, join the club, I guess. Where'd you hear that? The internet. And you believed it? Yeah. They can't put anything on the internet that isn't true. But uh, we're not perfect. We don't know much about this stuff, but we're learning. And uh, we learn by making mistakes. And if that axiom is true, then I'm probably the smartest guy in the world. <coughs> or will be soon enough. Anywho, when I was uh, talking about this uh, tube right here, I called it the phase inverter. Um, I didn't really scrutinize the uh, schematic yet, and um, just assumed the last tube before the output was the phase inverter. Uh, that's obviously not true. We have a transformer phase inverter right here. So we get a big old gain stage right here, I guess. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyway, but uh, what I was talking about... Uh, anyway, was just the, the fact that this schematic is nowhere near reality. This calls for a, uh, a 5 micro farad capacitor, and what was installed was, a, I believe, a 2 or something like that. So that part of, uh, the main point of what I was saying is true. Anyway, so uh, we're back at it. We're out of uh, installing crap mode. Now we're into troubleshooting mode. And uh, so what I think I'm going to do today, um, probably what I'll do first is I'm going to rewire these... Uh, the black and white wires here, if you can see through the shadows. I'm going to rewire the heaters. Um, it's a known issue. I mean, it's just a big giant antenna for noise. So probably rewire those, and I'll fire it back up and uh, test the voltages, uh, see if there's any uh, DC leakage through caps, stuff like that. And, uh, and then we'll do some, uh, some investigation and some learning. See if we can't figure out why we've got uh, lightning storms inside that power tube. Um, but one thing at a time. So, here we go. Enjoy. Alright, so we're back at it and checking the voltages in the circuit. Here, the voltages for the most part look to be spot on. Uh, we had a couple of uh, spots here. Um, this guy here is super high. It's supposed to be 150 and we get 190 volts. Um, so we'll look into that. Uh, but all the other ones seem very good except for V3. The uh, plate voltages are all over the place. I would think V that would, should be okay for V3B. That appears to be part of the tremolo circuit. But uh, this guy, I don't know, maybe it's not be because it's, maybe it's because the, uh, the reverb tank's not hooked up. Uh, I'm not smart enough to know this shit. But uh, we'll figure it out. So we got to address this guy here, and then we got to check the bias. I think that's going to be the next step, and uh, maybe the bias is, uh, you know, causing the arcing in the tube. Or maybe it's a bad tube, but we got a couple of tubes on the way, just in case. Oh, Mr. Multimeter just scared the shit out of me. What's the matter with this thing? What's all that churning and bubbling? You call that a radar screen? No, sir. We call it Mr. Coffee. He's letting me know he's shutting off. But, uh, yeah, sounds pretty good. Let's see if I can put this somewhere. Here, look at some cableage. The, uh, tremolo doesn't work, so we'll have to get in there and fix that. The, uh, the tone circuit's really nice. It has a, a big sweep. I'll start a uh, treble and bass both on zero. And I'll put the treble on five. Treble on ten. All right, now I have the treble on five, uh, bass on zero. Put the bass on five. It's real compressy. Bass on ten. Six. 
Cameraman down. Oh no, no joke. <laughs> All right, anyway, I'm just going through this little cheesy square back we got over here. But, uh, all right, more testing to do. We will return after these messages from our sponsor. Say, everybody ever seen my balls? They're big and saucy and brown. If you ever need a pick, pick me up. Just stick my balls in your mouth. Check this out. Here's a fun thing one can do. You can jump at the channels. This thing is a fucking beast. I don't know where I'm gonna stick this. This will probably blow out the phone. This sucker's loud. is that right I apologize for my horrible guitar playing but uh, I've been practicing I'm not trying to become anybody inhaling I just want to be good enough to do a respectable demo on these amplifiers someday maybe keep playing man Dude, gotta keep playing but uh yeah sounds awesome I just want to keep playing it's the only thing there is but uh she ain't quite ready yet so we gotta fix her up Anyway, I'm looking at our awesome schematic here, trying to uh, sort some stuff out. And as discussed, where are we at here? This guy here has got 190 volts. It should have 150 volts, but also it should be a 6EU7, but it's actually a 12AX7. So, yeah, this is awesome. This, these freaking Gibson schematics are just ridiculous. I mean, do you see a ground symbol anywhere in here? Anywhere. Does anybody see a ground symbol? I mean, we got one here on the friggin' transformer. I mean, is this really our reference for everything? Off the jacks? I mean, come on. These things are like a, a labyrinth. Any minute, David Bowie's gonna jump out and start singing some Faye song. How oh, you turn my world, you precious thing. From days your. But anyway. Um... So, looking at the, the plate resistor here, it's calling for 100K, and uh, I believe, I just looked this all up, so what I might say right now might be wrong, but, um, yeah, that's not 100K, that's 10K, so, yeah, that's a problem. And then if we look on the, uh, the other tryout of this tube, V4A, um, 
this guy's asking for 175 volts. It's got 178 volts, which is cool. Uh, it's got a 100K plate resistor on the schematic, but in reality, it's got a 150K resistor. It's like, Jesus, guys, what in the bloody hell? So we're going to fix that up, uh, and then we're going to bias it. Um, while I was playing and watching back the video, I did not see that uh, power tube arcing anymore. So maybe Ben Franklin's done doing his little experiment. Uh, let's hope so. But uh, keep an eye on that. So uh, after the Tom Priest has dinner, we're going to hopefully uh, do all that stuff I just said. Um, we're also going to uh, rewire... Yeah, I can't see it because of the, the lighting situation. But uh, rewire the heaters. Probably go in and put in a shielded cable for the uh, input section. Try to eliminate as much noise as possible. Um, and then we got to figure out what's going on with the tremolo circuit. And then eventually we're going to have to hook up the reverb tank and make sure that's uh, all copacetic. But, uh, all right, more to come. Oh, yeah, one more thing. We got a little uh, snap crackle pop on the, uh, the normal channel. I say it's crackle, the crispy sound. You got to have crackle or the clock's not wound. Peace, cackle, feather, stickle, belts, buckle, beats, pickle, but crackle makes the world go round. So there's a uh, bad capacitor somewhere in there. Uh, there's another black beauty over here. Um, so we'll trace that down, sort that problem out. We don't need to be uh, frying bacon while we're trying to uh, eat our custard pie. So, more to come. See, Bradley's got the right idea. Great minds think alike. Anywho, okay. So, uh, just tested the, uh, the bias on this sucker. I got a little worksheet here. If you want, you can take a picture of your screen and bring it down to Kinko's and print it out. Um, uh, the bottom line is we got 9.6 watts of plate dissipation on our tubes. And if we look at our trusty RCA receiving tube manual, uh, 6BQ5, also known as an EL84 if you're from Britain. Uh, maximum plate dissipation is 12, 12, 12 watts. So uh, that might have something to do with why we're breaking up so much. These uh, amplifiers are traditionally known for um, being clean, but this one's a real ripper. Um, that being said, it looks like from the factory that what Bradley calls the tone-sucking networks, which would be this and this, uh, have either removed... I think they were never installed. I looked at the... Um, where they should be on the circuit, and it doesn't look like it's, it looks like it's all original solder where these connections would be. So I think they were never installed from the factory, which is interesting, I guess. Um, but anyway, so uh, I think we're gonna uh, lower the uh, bias resistor, which is uh, this guy over here, this 130 volt, 130 volt, 130 ohm uh, ceramic, brick here. I think we might lower him a little bit, bump up the bias, get close to that 12 watt range. And this is run, that's uh, running at 120 volts off the Variac, although I still have it on the training wheels, so keep that into account. So I won't go all the way up. We'll uh, leave, leave a little bit of room, a little wiggle room, but uh, I've been playing around with it quite a bit. I think we're ready to take the training wheels off. But, uh, uh, other than that, I believe this guy needs to go. He's probably the suspect that's causing all the uh, crackling bacon in the normal channel. So, I'm going to do that now. Here I go. Again. On my own. Alright, I suppose we ought to talk about, uh, we ought to do some due diligence and uh, talk about safety here. Um, if you don't know what this... Uh, is right here then you probably have no business sticking your hands inside a uh, vacuum tube amplifier. The last thing you want to do is die while you're trying to uh, bias your single-ended amplifier. Or any amplifier for that matter. I mean I have no business sticking my hands in here. But uh, I'm an old man. Best days of my life are behind me so I'm actually kind of looking forward to maybe going out with a bang. But, uh, yeah, in between, uh, every time I, uh, 
energize the circuit and shut it down and go back in before I do anything. I uh, obviously discharge all the capacitors. Safety third. Another thing I was just testing out was the functionality of this pedal. Um, it appears the reverb is connected to pins three and four. So when you press the button down, uh, th pins three and four um, get connected or it runs through the, the button. And there is continuity there. I am not finding anything at all for the tremolo. So, um, I guess I'll start by looking under the plug, seeing if there's anything funky going on there. If not, then uh, see if I can take that little piece of wood out and see if we can't find any problems here. So, stay tuned for that. So I had the meter out trying to figure out what switch and what what switch went to what. Uh, prong here on the plug for the, the foot switch. Uh, the reverb was working. I could not get the tremolo continuity between any of the plugs. Um, that is, of course, until I ripped everything apart. And then, miraculously, it works perfectly. So, whatever. Uh, maybe it just needs a little cleaning. Maybe there's some corrosion on the plugs or whatever. But while we have it all apart, I'll uh, remove these switches, uh, squirt some spunk in there, and uh, clean it up a little bit. And then uh, I'd never clean the, well you can't see it from this side, but uh, that's where the foot switch plugs into that thing right there. We'll, uh, just like vacuum tubes, we'll uh, shoot some spunk in there and uh, stick that in and out a few times. That's what she said. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, hopefully she'll work nicely. And we'll have some reverb and we'll have some trem, trem how do you pronounce it? Trem, tremolo? We'll have some tremolo. Tremolo. Oh yeah, if you're playing the home game, this is the uh, the circuit inside the pedal. This is the plug as if you're looking at it like this. All right, so that's the pin out and the wires. And then this is the inside of the foot switch as if you're looking at, like, looking at it like this. All right, all right. God damn, my desk is getting out of control again. Shit ain't right. Ugh. First world problems, am I right? I got this handy dandy two bias calculator two pulled up here. I'm trying to figure out the uh, the best bias resistor for our amplifier uh, because we were running a little bit cold. Probably getting a little early breakup. Um, so, uh, here's the, the thing. The www.com. Um, so, I don't have the value we need. I think I need like a 110. So, what I think I'm going to do is... It's a one... It's measuring 133.5. I'm going to add one of these guys. 551, 552 measured ohms in parallel uh, 5 watt ceramic and that should bring us right up to the edge right up to the red line if this will focus at 11.9 uh, watts 99.2 uh, which should be fine for our cathode biased amplifier here um, yeah see what happens it's the worst that can happen new tubes are on the way yeah, and I used uh, another calculator here here's the and uh, this is what we get for equivalent resistance. And that's how we came to that figure. It's a lot better than using an abacus, that's for sure. Alright, there's my new RC network to uh, heat and bias up a little bit. Uh, it's a total hack job, but it's just in it temporarily until I get uh, some uh, proper resistors ordered. But uh, for testing purposes, it probably should be fine. Let's hope. Uh, the that greener ceramic resistor, the one that came with the amp, the legs were like super brittle, so this was a real pain in the neck to do. But uh, yeah, should be good for our purposes, and uh, which is all said and done, uh, should be cleaned up nice and won't look like a complete and total hack job. It'll just be like a partial hack job. But uh, we do what we do. 
Okay, so I popped out the capacitor that was over here. That appears to be this guy right here that goes to pin 9, the bypass cap. Um, schematic calls for a 1 micro, and again, Gibson and their shenanigans, we have a 6 volt, 5 microfarad capacitor. Um, good times. Gotta love it. Just can't be in focus. So the bias resistor for our tube here is a 1.5, and what do you know? What do you know? So, um, I think we're going to do here is uh, take a page out of Leo's book here and uh, do something like that, because I know I have that in stock. But uh, we'll see what I got kicking around. Throw something in there. We'll make it sweet. I got this guy kicking around on my desk here, so I don't need to go searching for anything. Oh, I had it in focus. It was so good. This was going to be a good take. Anyway, that's in between what was there and uh, what Leo does, so hey, let's reinvent the wheel, see what happens. This actually ain't too bad. And there she be. Hopefully uh, that's the one that was frying bacon. Um, I think we're going to find out in a second here. Uh, we'll fire her up, check our bias again, play a couple of notes. And then uh, I think we're going to call it quits for the night. And then uh, that'll be the end of part two. And then hopefully part three will be um, just addressing the uh, the noise issues. You know, rewiring the heaters, uh, adding um, shielded cable, shielded wire to the uh, input jacks and stuff like that. Reverb tank maybe. Uh, sorting out the tremolo, hooking up the reverb tank. Uh, checking out all the... Uh, Last things, dotting all the T's, crossing all the I's, put the chassis back in the cabinet, do a little cleanup. Oh, got something else? I don't know what's the matter with me, yeah. Uh, one other thing. Oh yeah, there's still a bunch of work to do. I gotta fix the Tolux eye on the cabinet, but uh, whatever. Got a good weekend project. So uh, stay tuned for that. Again, great minds think alike. Perfect timing. Alright, how are we gonna do this? All right, so I've recorded the values for the bias. I haven't figured it out yet, but while well, we got her fired up, let's see how she sounds. So we're trying to pick, 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 pick. The um, still frying bacon on uh, the normal channel. So wow, even on zero, this thing's on. on seven. Gotta keep playing. It's the only thing there is. Music, man. Keep playing. All right? I'm gonna come looking for you if you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I think that uh, the new bias sounds pretty good. Uh, it's got a little bit more headroom, but when you dime it out, it just cranks. It'll sound great with the reverb for sure. Can't wait. 
So more to do. I think this is going to be the end of um, part two. And then tomorrow, hopefully, we'll uh, probably be a part three and then a part four. And part four will probably be the, you know, fixing up the cabinet, doing the Tolex and breaking out the contact cement and all that good stuff. In uh, final assembly, and then part five will be the uh, the whole uh, charity thing, uh, if that all works out. But that's yet to be determined. My amp goes to zero, and it still makes noise. Perfectly in tune. Okay. So, hopefully you enjoyed that. Stay tuned for the next part, and uh, we'll see you next time in the Temple of the Tone Priest. Nailed it. That's what I'm talking about. Sounding good, Bradley. likes what the hell's wrong with people all right keep on rocking in the free world boys and girls